Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Ali Corum and Ed Carson here with a breakdown of the action in today's session and also a look at the week. So we did finally get that bounce in the market, but it was a rough week overall. So important to put everything into perspective. Yeah, we were still down for the week despite some big gains on the major indexes on Friday. Uh, but we do want to look at a few stocks that you know could be interesting. Chevron, CF Industries, and Albemarle. All right, we will do that. First, let's take a look at the major indexes. So the NASDAQ on Friday up 3.8%, followed by the Russell 2000 up 3.1%, the S&P 500 up 2.4%, and the Dow up some 1.5%. So we've been expecting a, an oversold bounce, but is this uh, you know a short-lived bear market rally or really a bottom? And that's the question on a lot of investors' minds, Ed. And right now, it's too early to tell. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know. This is one really strong day. It's, we've had this is day two of a rally. Uh, the Nasdaq was positive on Thursday. The S and P and Dow were up high enough in there on Thursday that their decline still counted as a rally day. So in a couple of days, we could get a follow through day. You know, uh, that would confirm the new uptrend. Still, wouldn't be proof that we're up to new highs. But you have to keep in mind we were down for the week uh, and. One good day in, in corrections, bear markets, don't change anything. That was still a pretty big drop. I mean, it's well off the lows, but if we fall again, nobody will remember really today's action. That's a long, long way to go. I mean, it's, a, it's it would still be pretty steep to go. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do, uh, it seems like. So it might be good if we consolidated for a few days, then, then moved higher. And, you know, we'll just have to see. Uh, you know, I don't think if investors do anything, we'll talk about it more. But if you do anything, you should keep it really, really light. And, I, and there's a lot of good reasons to say just stay completely on the sidelines until we get a lot more strength. Correct, guys. And that's why I always show them this when I show stuff like this. Now I show the investors business daily because I actually like the two of them a lot. And like he's been more conservative from the business daily. And it's it's I don't know that they seem to be on to something here because they've been stop well not stop to stop but since it started dropping they've been locked up in what i'm thinking like stay on the sidelines if you want to nibble in nibble in a little bit here and there but don't put yourself at a huge risk here right and uh yes we'll we'll get into it more about how to <laughs> how to handle handle this but right now we'll just kind of uh interpret the action here ed let's also take a look at the s p 500 uh back above the four thousand level the Dow, so blue chips here, back above 32,000, and IWN, so small caps, uh, up and trying to find a bottom as well. A lot of damage here recently. Uh, your thoughts on you know, the importance of you know small caps and you know other areas of the market leading the way? If if we are to see a bottom here, what kind of participation would you like to see? Well, it's not a surprise to see small caps. They tend to be more extreme one way or the other. So it's not a surprise. You know, today they didn't lead, but, you know, it wouldn't be a surprise to see them lead. But you really want to see that sustained because the small caps have been lagging for so long that it's just been, you know, been a surprise. You know, historically, small caps have been the real leaders. That's where you find the growth over time. But it has been the relative strength versus the S&P going back it's like well over a year that's why sometimes we talk about it's really almost been a bear market for growth bear market for small caps in many ways for over a year this podcast friday the 13th did not turn out to be an unlucky day for the stock market all of the major stock market averages enjoyed big rallies on friday of course these are the type of rallies that you expect to occur in bear markets sometimes during bear markets investors panic to what do I keep saying, guys? We're in a bear market. And look at both of these. Oh, but Peter Schiff's been talking about this too. But look at what I showed you to start this. They're talking bear market. When you're in a bear market, you have these dead cap balances. You have these relief rallies, whatever you want to call them. Investors get nervous. They flip out of one thing to the next. You have short coverings and all this other stuff that happens on imploding. But eventually, the coverings stop. And then you just have a steep decline. And that's what you need to watch out and embrace it. You know, embrace your portfolios for it. To me, in this kind of an environment with the inflation and all the manipulation that we see in the crypto markets especially, there's no reason to not have your money on the sidelines, at least a huge chunk of it. Or understand lobster and get into your assets. 
buy. They don't panic to sell until the end of the bear market. And despite the carnage, I have not really seen any indications of panic selling. I've seen more indications of panic buying, which in my mind indicates that there's still a lot of downside to go. Although the gains on Friday were not enough to turn the tide of red on the week because the U.S. stock market index has finished another week in the red. This is the sixth consecutive losing week for stocks, the longest streak of weekly losses going all the way back to June of 2011. So better than 11 years ago before you can put together six consecutive weekly declines. We'll see if we can make it a seventh week next week because despite this bounce, I think there's still a lot of downside left in the market. There was a lot of news early in the morning that helped set the tone for the rally. First of all, we got Elon Musk tweeting out that his deal to buy Twitter was on hold. Ironic that he would make that announcement on Twitter itself. And as soon as he tweeted about it, shares of Twitter plunged by 20%. Now, Twitter's shares were already trading at a pretty good discount to the supposed offer price, 54 and change, that Musk made for Twitter. So there was a lot of risk that the deal wasn't gonna happen. I've been pointing that out, and you can tell by the discount because there was a big arbitrage opportunity if you bought shares in the open market and then tendered them into the buyout. The risk, of course, was the deal didn't happen, and that risk was elevated on Friday morning when Musk tweeted that he was reconsidering the deal and the stock price collapsed. Now, as soon as Twitter shares sold off, Tesla's shares spiked by about 5%. Of course, it's good news for Tesla. That is one of the reasons I didn't think Musk was gonna buy Twitter, that he actually had any real intention of doing it, that he was having some fun, that he was bluffing. Maybe he was just trying to pump up the price of the shares he already owned so he could bail on a, as, at a profit. I just didn't think it made sense for him to A, pay that much for Twitter, and B, jeopardize Tesla, because if he has to margin his Tesla shares in order to overpay for Twitter, he is at risk of a margin call if the market melts down, which it could very easily do if you look at what's happening to so many other high multiple meme type stocks, the same thing could easily happen to Tesla. So when the news comes out that the deal might not happen, there's a relief rally in Tesla shares. And of course, Tesla shares have been beaten up pretty badly going into the session. And so there was probably some reason for the stock to bounce, maybe some shorts covered. But throughout the day, there were a lot of statements, both by Twitter and maybe Musk himself, that left the door open that, yes, this deal still might happen. Maybe it'll happen at a lower price. Oh, the prior day, micro strategies up 19% on the day. Look what happened to the meme stocks. GameStop was up 10%, AMC up 5.5%. In fact, the crappier the stock, the more it tended to go up. The blue chip stocks didn't have nearly... Guys, listen what he says about the UST and the stability and all the stuff that he's going to talk about real quick. And then I'm going to get into one more thing, and then we're going to get into the fucking charts. But this, sometimes I got to bring you all the information in one place so you guys know what the hell is actually going on. And not the fun and bullshit that circulates on YouTube. Hit that motherfucking like button for me while we're waiting. As big a move, the Dow Jones was up 1.5% on the day. S&P 500 was up 2.4%. NASDAQ Composite up 3.7%. Russell 2000 also had a big gain up 3.1%. Again, all these indexes still finishing down on the week, and they are not out of the woods. The biggest loser, though, I think on the week was Bitcoin. In particular, look at shares of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Despite a 7.6% rise on the day, the fund was still down 21% on the week. That's a much bigger decline than, let's say, the ARK Innovation Fund. That was only down 4.5% on the week. So Bitcoin doing a lot worse than a lot of the other risk assets on the NASDAQ in particular because of what happened with the Terra Luna coin and the UST, US dollar stable coin, completely blowing up. As I'm recording this podcast on Saturday late morning, the UST stable coin is below 20 cents. 
So people who bought that particular coin, believing that they couldn't lose and thinking they were going to get 20% annual interest, have now lost more than 80% of their principal, and obviously they're not getting any interest. So that was a complete disaster. The people who bought Terra Luna lost even more, but of course they didn't think they were buying a stable coin. They thought they were going to get rich, these lunatics. Instead, they went broke. The Terra Luna coin is basically at zero. I mean, it's not quite at zero. It's hard for a crypto to ever go to zero because you could break down each individual unit into a tiny fraction of a cent. And that's where this thing is trading, 0. 0.000 something like that cents. And so it's very volatile and you can obviously make it lose a lot of money if you buy enough of these things. But eventually it is going to zero out. But this really highlights the risk inherent in these coins. But more importantly, look at how many people in the Bitcoin industry, crypto in general, were singing the praises of this company, its CEO, the founders, a lot of high profile people, Mike Novogratz, not only did his Galaxy Digital invest a lot of money, the guy tattooed the Nova symbol on his arm. That's how big a fanatic he was and how much he believed in this Terra Luna project and their stable coin and the whole thing imploded. And the question people have to ask themselves is if so many of the biggest people in crypto, supposedly the smartest people in that crypto room, if they couldn't see that this was a scam, what else are they wrong about? Because the very minute I heard about this, I knew there was a problem. I immediately tweeted it out because <laughs> when I read that they were gonna have 10 billion worth of Bitcoin. Guys, <laughs> exact same thing I said. That was when I put my warning out that they were going to help crash the market. When they said they were buying $10 billion in Bitcoin, that should have been the first red flag for everybody. I said, we're going to zero. And I didn't say zero until we were at $113 a share. And I said, sell this shit out. It's going to zero. I put everything together. The fact that everything on KuCoin and many other exchanges go right into the UST made perfect sense. All that leveraged money that people were making off of them, they didn't have it. So what did they do? Even if people were sleeping and not trading, they just had it in Terra, the UST, the stable Terra. They woke up the next day and they're broke. Broke. There were warnings though. I even played Peter Schiff's thing when I was trying to warn people. And I said, hey, Peter's saying it too. So if you don't believe me, at least believe somebody with a little bit of uh, integrity here, you know. <laughs> and within the financial world, like me, I'm just some schlub on YouTube. But Peter Schiff is some, uh, you know, you know backing their US dollar stable coin. The minute I read that, it made no sense to me. How could you have a stable coin that's stable to the dollar if you don't have any dollar reserves? If your only reserves are Bitcoin, which in and of itself is not stable, then how could you have a coin that stability is based on backing by something that in and of itself is not stable? And so the whole thing to me seemed ridiculous, but the Bitcoin community embrace this nonsense and i think one of the reasons they did was because they were buying so much bitcoin they were claiming that they were going to use all this bitcoin as a reserve and all of a sudden now all these bitcoin pumpers had a use case for bitcoin ah you see bitcoin can be used for something it's going to be used as a reserve just the way gold once was a reserve for fiat currencies bitcoin is going to be a reserve for digital currencies and so the bitcoin community really wanted to embrace this because they were getting all this money and then using it to buy up Bitcoin. The problem was the whole thing imploded so quickly because Bitcoin itself started to go down. But the other problem was the UST stablecoin was not just backed by Bitcoin, but also backed by these Luna tokens. And in order to defend the stability of UST, they had to keep creating more and more Luna and selling them into the market to buy up UST. And that immediately started a crash in Luna because the supply was exploding and the whole thing spiraled out of control and it just completely blew up. But this was an obvious accident waiting to happen. The only thing that surprises me is that this time it happened so quickly. The whole thing blew up in about a week's time. It wasn't that long ago where I first pointed out how ridiculous this thing was. Normally, when I predict something, it takes a long time for my predictions to come true. This is one of the quickest predictions that I've ever made as far as how quickly it came true. But you have all these people in Bitcoin now, they have a big credibility problem. Because if they didn't see this scam, what other 
other scams are they not seeing? Crypto obviously right now getting crushed. Tonight, a massive sell-off of cryptocurrency, erasing more than $200 billion from the entire market in a single day. Bitcoin is down more than 50% from the high. One minute it looks like the market's going to rip, the next minute it looks like the market's going to dip. And I don't know what in the world's going on, so I'm out no mas. The price of Bitcoin plunging to its lowest level in 16 months. The second largest digital currency, Ether, tanking below $2,000 a coin, down more than $1,000 from a month ago. The numbers sending some investors spiraling, fearing they could lose it all. What is happening right now? A lot of people are in a world of hurt right now, and they're getting a rude awakening of what it's like to be in the crypto markets again. Crypto is a roller coaster, so you gotta buckle up and enjoy the ride. As institutional investors leave the traditional markets, they're also taking money out of cryptocurrencies, and that is causing a huge amplified dive in the crypto markets. In total, it seems crazy to say, but I'm down around $35,000. So I actually lost over half my portfolio. I've lost many, many big amounts of money. <laughs> One of the hardest hit coins, Luna, erasing 99% of its value, now worth nearly nothing. I mean, this is the definition of a black swan event. This is the Lehman Brothers collapse of crypto. There are people saying that they've lost hundreds of thousands, even more than a million uh, in this sort of cryptocurrency spiral. But experts tell me while that is likely true for some people, that is not true for the majority of people. In fact, I'm told common advice when it comes to crypto is investing anywhere from 1% to 5% of of your overall net worth and the rule here as with any investment always be prepared for the possibility that you could lose it Good early afternoon, 1.33 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the East Coast in the United States of America. I'm XRP, future millionaire, and I reside in the great state of Michigan. Slightly warm, humid, you know, that uncomfortable summer feeling when it's in the mid-80s, low-80s. Um, so I wanted to show you guys an intro like that because you need to understand what's actually going on because there's a lot of stuff going on. And I believe sometimes I have to do things like that and integrity, Peter Schiff has integrity, you know, Robert Kiyosaki, and uh, how I started it as well. That, that's becoming a, a, I'm starting to like that duo. So, um, a lot of information there. I hope you watched it, and I hope you made it through to the end, because I'm not going to show my technical analysis until the end, when I think it's something I think everybody needs to watch. So, if I'm taking the time to put everything in one place for you guys to see, it makes it a lot easier sometimes. And those are people I trust, people that have helped transform me. Peter Schiff and Robert Kiyosaki especially. So let's take a look here. We've got DGB right now. Still struggling here. We're, we're still struggling. We do have a bullish engulfing candle here, but we're struggling to get by the 200 as we've been talking about. We just keep pulling down. There's only so much room left here because now it looks like we have a head and shoulders formation that's kind of appearing here. And rising channel, bust up back down kind of pull down you probably will start seeing something like this and then it'll end up when we look back at it we're gonna say oh my god we had a fucking i'm topping reversal and nobody's seen it that's possibly what could be happening here if it happens don't say i didn't warn you because i can clearly see an m starting to form there in the 30 minute time frame it's just an extended m and it's gonna trap a lot of people right bam bam it could do one of these even but if we can break out of this area, but we'd have to come back up and back test here, we could have a head formation and come way up here, but that's going to take some volume. So as of right now, the way we're rounding, to me, it feels like we could do something, you know, hold on, that looks like a ass. So we did this and we came up here, came down. It looks like we could even do something like this again and then pull right down for uh, XDC. I don't know why I said DGB, but I was excited to do XDC and then I said DGB, whatever. You guys can see what it is. So XDC looks like it could be pulling down. So I was excited to show because I seen that when I clicked on it before and I seen the M and I'm like, ooh, there could be an M forming. And that could be the start. So that's what we're looking at there. 
DGB. They're all similar, but if DGB pulls down here, right? Down, up. If we bust this flag, it'll just end up in. There's a lot of there's a lot of evidence that if it pulls down, but we also on a bull flag. You know, we're on the top side of the 20 day for the immediate short term. But the future's open tonight, so I would expect a small rally because people might get excited. But other than that, I think after this bull flag, because I can still see this playing out like this and then coming up to another level. So until this plays out or breaks the uptrend, I'm sitting back, hanging tight. And I will be until we have the next crash because guess what, guys? It's going to be a nightmare. Absolute nightmare. You can believe me or go broke. Um, I got in a bull flag breaking up into here. So as long as we're on top of that 20 day, 30 minute time frame, I still think we're probably going to pop up and do something like this. Cause we're going to get a little overexcited here. People will get overexcited, but the problem is when you get overexcited, if the manipulators on the futures open decide to be dicks, it'll just pull down like that. And we have a built in M formation that could possibly form. And then if it pulled down, you could bounce around and it's almost got the pattern built in on a fake bull flag. So let's make sure we don't get caught with our pants down here. XRP is the exact same way. It is trying to stay in the uptrend, but without the volume, the problem is, is you're going to start to break these uptrends just by going sideways. And you guys seen last time what happened. We went sideways, and once we broke the uptrend, on the recent part of the pattern, it just dropped it. Because it broke out of the uptrend, and then it came back, got a little burst, back tested, and went... And then we were at 33 cents before we knew it. So... Make sure we're paying attention here because although it's not technically a busted flag, it's got no strength. So that will likely play down. It's just that I'm playing cautious that it could pull out a cup and handle out its ass right here. Bend everybody even farther over who's going to try to short the position. Have them assume the position. And you know the, you know the old saying around here. But there's going to be so much force when they thrust into you, your eyeballs are going to pop out. Oh yes, it's not going to be pretty either. But the good thing is you won't have any eyeballs, so you won't even be able to see how uh, how hideous things have gone. So that's what I'm watching, guys. It's absolute slugfest out here of uh, uh, manipulation. So not much more we can say about that. And Bitcoin's got the exact same pattern. It's trying to actively break this uptrend. And it could W up. It could possibly come up here and finish this. But even if it does, I, I think it's going to run out of steam here. And it really does look like it's building in a much bigger W part on, or uh, M part on this pattern. Even if it were to extend out and go like this, you can still see how it would pull Batman top. XRP Future Millionaire. Hit that motherfucking like button. Join Tom's Army, $9.99 a month. Get that telegram and make sure you join the Twitch because uh, you're going to want to join the classes. It's all in the video description below. No excuses.